Welcome to another episode. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be taking a trip to go to a version 3 supercharger to see how the Model Y charges compared to the maybe the Model 3 uh, at V3 speed. So it's supposed to be up to 250 kilowatt hours of speed. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, does in real life. Let's see if there's any differences between this car and the Model 3 uh, as it's charging at a V3. So here's what we're gonna do. I have 29% battery left and a the supercharger, if we take a look out here, the one I'm interested in is right here. And it is a 250 kilowatt version three supercharger. So it says it's about 32 miles away. And if we set that as our destination, says 40 minutes 49 minutes 40 miles and we'll arrive with 13 percent so if this all works out we should be arriving right at the optimum time for maximum speed for that charger so let's give this a shot so some of the tools we can use to see how well we're going to make it let's take a look at our energy so it can tell you on your trip um, how it thinks you're gonna do. So we'll keep an eye on this, and right now it says we'll arrive at 13%. So right now it's projecting I can make it 77 miles, um, about 92 if you use our instant. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on these charts and see how we're doing along the way. We are not going to be really doing excessive speeds along the way because there's no interstates. It's all, there is a highway. Um, so we'll see how fast we go on that and go from there. the halfway point when we took off they said we would arrive with 13% charge so even though this isn't a very long trip uh, there's not a lot of variables here but let's just see how we're trending so it looks like now it's saying something like 12% and you can see there's starting to be a gap between its predicted arrival and how we're doing so far now there's a couple of things that are happening here. If we look at our consumption, there's some areas where we had to use more energy than the average, um, and that average is what was used to determine what our arrival would be. So, as we can see, that is starting to have an impact, and that's something to keep in mind when you're doing these road trips, is how will the uh, systems that I'm using on the car impact my anticipated arrival? I had to use the AC for a while to defrost all the windows as an example. That uses additional energy that we're not normally using. Also, you can see pretty clearly it is 42 degrees right now, which is not ideal temperature for range. 
one of the benefits we have, like a lot of roads in Indiana, they are long, straight, and flat. <laughs> so that is helping uh, to kind of average out this curve. All right, so we've got about eight miles left to go. Um, battery just now started preconditioning for supercharging. Kind of surprised we've driven a lot today, uh, but uh, good enough. So we will uh, be pulling in shortly, but I wanted to also look at how we're doing our consumption. We really leveled out around the 310, 315 uh, watt per mile range. Um, and I guess that's not really a surprise with the temperatures. We're starting to get acclimated to the car and getting used to the car not getting anywhere near the range um, with any substantial driving at speed. But now you can see we're looking at arriving at about 11%, which is 2% less than what we had planned when we took off. So, um, yeah, everything's going fine. It's okay, so we made it at about 12 percent so it was off by one percent and that's over 40 miles at now 38 degrees uh, which isn't too bad i suppose that's about three or so miles of range looks like this v3 is in a meyer parking lot and given the state of things right now there is nobody here which is understandable i suppose so let's find our charger and it looks like these are all v3 chargers so just as we were talking about the cold weather and having an impact on range i just got an interesting warning on the screen it says there will be significantly less energy available from your battery if it gets colder we recommend you charge now and again so we're super low we're actually at 11 percent um but that's an interesting warning i guess uh if you're from a cold climate, you better get used to that. Now, one of the things also that's contributing to using more energy is we started uh, preconditioning for supercharging. So I'm sure that that ramps up energy usage just to get it primed, warm, ready for uh, what it's about to take. All right, so we're getting close to the 100 kilowatt hour speed. We ramped up pretty quick to 158 was the fastest I saw. And this is a V3 charger. I know it's a recently built one, um, but it's not like yesterday. This is at least probably a month old at this point. I'm not sure why I can't get any faster than 158 um, when this thing should be getting up to 250. At least that's what I was expecting. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know why we're not getting 250 kilowatt hour uh, speed on a V3 charger in our new Model Y. Uh, maybe it's common. I hope not. Uh, maybe it's the cold. I don't know. Um, but it looks like we're getting to that 100 kilowatt hour range pointed right now. We're at 45%, about to be 46. So it looks like even in V3, that's about where it tapers to 100 uh, kilowatt speed. And at that point, um, I certainly have enough charging at home, so I'll unplug from there. I'm very disappointed, uh, you know, even in the 150 kilowatt hour station um, I did last week. I maxed out at 136 kilowatt, I believe. So for some reason, I'm not able to get this car to um, hit the max speeds that these chargers are able to do. So I'm not sure why that is, but um, I guess I'll have to try again. I'm assuming it's gotta be something to do with maybe temperature. Um, I hope not, but maybe it is a temperature thing with it being cold out. It's 37 degrees right now. Um, so. The quest continues to find fast charging speeds in the Tesla. I hope that uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for joining us again. 
Don't forget to click subscribe, like this video, and keep on the lookout for the next video to come out. We'll do some range tests here very soon, although with the cold, I'm a little concerned about how far. So maybe that'll be a good benchmark test of uh, what to expect when it's cold outside versus later on this summer, we'll get some real range to see how far the battery can actually go in ideal conditions. Thanks for joining. We'll catch you next time.